Standing at 4,095.2 meters, Mount Kinabalu is Malaysia's tallest mountain. Naturally, hiking up is an amazing experience, but it is not an easy feat. To add on to the adventure, I opted for the Via Ferreta route to fully experience Mount Kinabalu. I will be documenting the entire experience, so this video can give you an insight on how the hike will look like and I'll be sharing some tips along the way. The company I engaged for this hike is Borneo Calling and the reason I picked them is because they offer private tours and was very responsive to my inquiries. Everything was well organised and their pickup was right on time. Hi, nice to Hi, meet you. Hi, morning. I'm Wei from Borneo Calling. Hi, I'm Bernard. Hi. Welcome to Kori Kinabalu. Thank you, thank you. The journey there is approximately 2 hours via car and you can enjoy the scenery along the way. So to all the drone pilots out there, just to give you a heads up, you can't fly a drone in the Kinabalu Park HQ area, so there's also no point bringing it up for the hike because you can't fly it anyway. But what you can do is to make a pit stop before you enter the Park HQ area. So you can see Mount Kinabalu behind me and here you can legally fly a drone according to my guide. So just a 15 minutes drive away from the viewpoint where I previously flew the drone is the Park HQ and this is where we'll do our pre-climb registration. The process is simple and straightforward and the only thing you will need is your passport. Your guide or driver will help you with the registration process. This is also where you will store your extra luggage during your climb. After registration, you can explore the surrounding areas. Kudasang is a beautiful town with amazing views. If you have more time on hand, you could go to Pouring Hot Springs, which is a 40 minutes drive away. There, you can soak yourself to relax your muscles before the big day. After the hot spring, I totally recommend checking out Desa Dairy Farm, where you get to enjoy fresh dairy products and get amazing views of Kinabalu Mountain. So after a long day of travelling and exploring the surrounding areas, we are now going to check into our accommodation, which is the Kinabalu Pine Resorts, and here we are going to rest and prepare for our hike tomorrow. I am now going to pack my bag for the hike tomorrow and here is my recommended list of items that you should bring along. Hiking sticks, a head torch, an outer layer that is waterproof and windproof, base layer, gloves, beanie, wool socks, down jacket, heat packs, water bottle, and last but not least, a camera. That is not necessary but I would totally recommend it. I'm all done with my packing and I'm going to go grab some dinner and get some rest. So see you guys tomorrow in the morning. Okay, so the big day has arrived. It's the 1st of March 2020. What a good way to start the month. Uh, it's currently 8.22 and we have opted to start a little earlier for the hike. The main bulk of the hikers will start at 9am and the earliest you can begin is 8am because that's where the gates open. You can't start any earlier even if you wanted to. Hi, please. Your name tag, you have to wear it all the time. So everyone will be issued a climber's ID and please check that your name is correct and this is to be worn at all times. Hello, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Nice to meet you. Uh, your name is? Uh, Jamin. Jamin, okay. Uh, good morning. My name is Jamin. I started being a mountain guide from 2000 until now. Uh, 20 years already. 20 years? Yeah, 20 years. How many times have you climbed up? Uh, I've climbed uh, three times a week. Three times a week? Yeah. Okay, wow, that's a lot. So this is the packed lunch, they will give it to you, so apparently you have to carry it yourself up the mountain. So this is just something to note. Sure. Okay, sure. It's not even a kilometer in and I'm already feeling it. So if you are doing this hike, I would advise you to be physically prepared. Definitely do your training before coming here. Let's continue on. Hello. 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 So that's a total of 6 kilometers, and we are supposed to cover on average 1 hour for every kilometer. So yes, I'm pretty sure we can make the briefing on time with ample time to spare. So right ahead is our second checkpoint or second rest stop. Pondok Uba. We didn't rest at the first stop, so we're gonna take a short break here. This is at about the 1.4 kilometers mark. Whew. During the hike, do take some time to appreciate the large variety of plants along the trail. Hello? <laughs> How are you feeling? Okay. 
Okay. <laughs> it's a good workout, huh? Yeah. You? Yeah, I'm, I'm feeling good. Feeling good. <laughs> good. So we are at checkpoint number three. Pondok Lowy. And it's Pondok Low. <laughs> so it seems like there's a toilet at every checkpoint. So that's a good thing. So after two hours and 44 minutes, oh wait, a squirrel interrupted me. Let me get footage of that first. The wildlife here is not very shy. So anyways, I was saying, after 2 hours and 45 minutes, we are at uh, rest stop number 4. It's about the 3.3 kilometers mark, so we are making good on time. Uh, we're gonna stop here for lunch. So yeah, let's see what they have prepared for us. Okay, yeah. hey, come on, reveal the food. Da -da -da -da. The squirrel is very interested too. Like what's for lunch? Okay, it's bread and chicken. Is that chicken on the side? Not sure, I think so. Yes, so that's lunch. So you guys uh, done the Via Ferretta rock or it's always just the... Uh, never tried the Via Ferretta? Not yet. Not yet. We, are, we are trying this time Via Ferretta. Yeah, correct. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> So after a 30 minutes lunch break, we are setting off again. So we have about half of the journey left or slightly under half. And from what our guide told us, the rest of the trail will be equally as tough as the first half. Don't believe him. So my girlfriend was right. In my opinion, the second half of the hike is way tougher than the first half of the hike. So we are at rest stop number 5. Uh, I've been resting here for the past 5 minutes before I finally had the strength to continue vlogging. This is the 4km mark and it's been 4 hours and 2 minutes. I think 2 more kilometers to go. After a short rest, we're gonna continue. As you get to the higher altitudes, you will notice that the plants here are different. They are worth stopping for for a quick photo. We are at Pondok Milosa. We are at the 6th Pondok, taking our short Pond break. Pondok Milosa? Yeah. <laughs> and these people are having their lunch. Yeah. <laughs> Hi. Enjoying their lunch. We ate our lunch like about um, two Pondoks ago. <laughs> two pondoks ago. <laughs> so behind me is Pondok Paka, which is uh, pit stop number 7. So from here, we are only 500 meters away to the base camp. As much as I would like to just push on and complete it, I really need a rest. The last 500 meters was definitely painful, but the view at base camp made it so worth it. And it was pure joy when we finally had Pendant Hut in our sights. So we finally made it to Pendant Hut. We arrived at 4pm. We were cutting it a little close because the cutoff time for the safety briefing for the Via Ferretta is at 4.30pm. Uh, if you really want to do the Via Ferretta the next day, please make sure that you arrive here before 430 um, and if you think that you're a slower hiker and you're going to take more time, please start your hike as early as possible and take lesser and shorter breaks. So now we're going to head in to do the safety briefing. The safety briefing is approximately 30 minutes to an hour and it is very useful in preparing us for the next day. They briefed us on how to use the equipment and we went through hands-on practice. Hi everyone, we're going to have dinner now. <laughs> Dinner is served from 4.30 to 7pm and I'm hungry. Let's go! Dinner will be served at Laban Rata restaurant and it is buffet style. There is a balcony where you get to enjoy the sunset and it is also a very nice place for a time lapse. At 2am, we push off for the summit. The distance from base camp to the summit is around 2.7km. To make it for the Via Ferretta cutoff time, we have to be at the summit by 6am and back at the 7.5km point by 7am. Sayat Sayat checkpoint is where they will check your climbing permit, so please make sure you have your climber's ID tag with you. This is also the last place they will have a proper toilet. That is something you might want to note. Despite the short distance to the peak, the climb is challenging. There are some steep portions that will actually require you to hold on to a rope to pull yourself up. After 4 hours and 15 minutes, I finally made it to the summit and the view was phenomenal. I spent about 10 minutes taking photos and had to proceed back down to Low's Peak Circuit starting point in order not to miss the cutoff time. At the starting point, our Via Ferretta guide helped us don our climbing gear 
and after safety checks and the final briefing, very soon we were hanging off the side of Mount Kinabalu. It was an exhilarating moment and it definitely enhanced the overall hike experience. There are a few key highlights of low speed circuit that I would like to point out. The course begins with a descent of approximately 600 meters. The starting part of the climb is the steepest and it's a test of your nerves if you're afraid of heights. Soon enough, we come across the first highlight of the course, the Nepalis Bridge. What an adrenaline rush walking across a narrow plank with such a steep drop. The next highlight is the three wire bridge and that really puts your balancing skills to the test. After all the exhausting challenges, we took a well-deserved break and that was when we could really enjoy the stunning Crocker Range view. After the short break, we resumed our adventure and began a short hike through a forest. Unlike the main trail that is very well maintained, this forest trail is very raw and you have to really watch your step. Here comes the final part of the course and arguably the most physically demanding portion, an ascent of around 300 meters. It took us a total of 5 hours to complete this course and from what I was told, the average time it takes is between 4 to 6 hours. As we make our way down the mountain, let me share my thoughts on this entire trip. Firstly, I would like to say that Mount Kinabalu is a mountain worth hiking and the views are breathtaking. It is quite a physical challenge, so you do need to train to prepare for it. Secondly, the Via Ferrata takes the adventure to a whole new level. The experience itself is mind-blowing and I would totally recommend you to do it as it will make the climb so much more memorable. Last but not least, I would like to point out that the team at Bonyu Calling made my trip really comfortable and smooth sailing. All the guides and drivers made me feel very welcomed and were knowledgeable enough to answer my endless questions. I would totally recommend them in a heartbeat if you are in search of a tour operator for your Mount Kinabalu hike. This brings the Mount Kinabalu video to an end. I hope you guys enjoyed it and found it useful. Till the next one, it's a wrap.